Hello, guys. Good evening to everyone. Hi, teacher. Hello. So, um, well, nice to to see that you're here once again. Thank you very much for always being on time, and that's part of your responsibility. So, thank you very much for doing so. So, um, well, as usual, guys, I'm going to start by asking you questions about that previous topic. So yesterday we saw a little bit about present continuous and how to use questions or how to make questions. Now, I'm going to ask you this in general. So if you know the answer, just let me know. If I use the verb be at the beginning of a question using present continuous, how do we call to those questions? Yes or no question. Yes or no questions. Thank you very much. Now, what happens if I use a WH question at the beginning in present continuous? What happens? What do I have to do? We need to, we need to answer the whole question. The, the, the whole thing. It means that we have to give a complete answer. So we cannot say yes or no. Now, uh, something else that you might remember about present continuous in questions. For example, let me ask you, if I want to answer, give a short answer to a question, what is the way that I, uh, that I do that? For example, if I ask you, uh, are you going to, no, are you eating pupusas? If I ask you a question like that, how would you answer that question but short, short answer? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay, thank you very much, Julio and Rebecca. So I think that we got pretty clear what's the present continuous. So today, guys, what we're going to do, to, today's class is going to be focused a little bit on time expressions. I'm pretty sure that some of you already know about it. And well, we just have uh, today's class and tomorrow is going to be our last class. Y el día de mañana es nuestra última clase, chicos. So, um, well, so let's see. For tomorrow, what we're going to do is that we're going to check or verify some grammar uh, in case something you forgot something and you want me to explain you again, I need you to come out or to bring some questions for tomorrow. So if you have any question regarding to anything or any of the topics that we saw during this module, tomorrow it will be the opportunity or the last opportunity to help you with that. So we can discuss and we can also practice because tomorrow is going to be also a little bit of practice at the end and uh, well, um, then you're going to just be waiting for administration to call you and to go to uh, module number two. So just let me go ahead and show you. Let's see, we have uh, an exercise here. And just let me share the screen so you can have an idea. All right, so this is one exercise that we're going to have for today, which is focused on what we saw yesterday. Uh, and not only yesterday, but also what we saw on Monday. No, on Thursday, Tuesday, my bad. Because on Tuesday, we started um, present continuous and just it was positive and negative sentences. So yesterday, what we did was questions. So I'm going to ask you in general, not in general, probably, well, for example, Felix, 
If I ask you to give me the answer for number one, what would you say? ¿Qué dirías for answering number one? According to what you understood, de acuerdo a lo que ya entendiste, the present continuous. Oh, you're talking, but I cannot listen to you, Felix. You have your microphone off. Uh, you are losing my mobile phone. Say it again. You are losing. Using, okay. You are using my mobile phone. Thank you very much, Felix. Now, Rebecca, what about number two? My dad is washing his car. He's washing his car. Excellent. Thank you very much. Jessica, what about number three? It is not raining today. Excellent. It is not raining today. Now, let me see, Julio, what about number four? Who, mm, who is she chatting to, to now? Who is she chatting to now? Excellent. What about, let me see, number five, Oscar. What do you think, Oscar? Oscar? What is the Uh, I I cannot really I can barely understand what you're saying. Casi no no te escucho, Oscar. Ahora. No, yes. Now it's better. So what is the answer for number five? What do you think? ¿Qué piensas de la número cinco? Uh, what are you? doing at the moment what are you doing at the moment excellent now juan number six we are sitting on the train the train excellent let me see number seven i will ask to elena elena what do you think about number seven Elena, are you there? Well, I think she's not there. Um, let's see. Mm, Jancy, what do you think, Jancy? Jancy? Well, she's not there either. So can I have a volunteer for number seven? The students are having lunch in the camp. In the uh, canteen. In the canteen. Canteen, yes, in the canteen. So uh, are having lunch in the canteen. Great. Thank you very much, Julio. Now, uh, let me see. Number eight. I would like to have, let me see someone here. I'm pretty sure that I saw someone. Oh, Francisco. Francisco, what do you think about number eight? Voy entrando, teacher, ahorita. Okay, but I, I mean, this exercise, este ejercicio, todo es nuevo. Nadie sabía que este estaba. So we're just checking. Solo estamos viendo. If you understand, uh, or in this case, if you understood about present continuous. So for number eight, we have a question. Are you making dinner? ¿Qué dirías tú? What would you say, Francisco? Okay, so let's see. Um, 
Let me see someone else. Jessica, no, yes, Jessica, why not? Go ahead, Jessica, what would you say to that question? Um, yes, I am. Yes, I am, simple as that. So we don't have to uh, complicate ourselves that much. Now, uh, we also have something, guys, something else here. And in this part, I will request from your help too. Patricia, what is the continuous form of the verb work? Working. Excellent. Oscar, what is the continuous form of the verb rain? Raining. Raining, okay. Rebecca, what is the continuous form of bright? Rebecca? Yes, yes. A, a right, writing. Writing, writing, okay. Writing. Felix, what about Ron? Rolling. I'm sorry. Leave. Leaving. Oh. Leaving. Leaving, okay. Julio, what about run? Running. Do I do I double the last letter? Yes or no, Julio? Yes, double N. Double N, okay. Thank double you very much. Mm -hmm. Now let me see uh someone else here. Juan, what about sit? Sitting. Sitting. Do I double the last letter? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, uh, let's see someone else here. Let me double check. Oscar, study. Studying. Do I change the letter Y for a letter I? E N D. E N D. No, but but the question is, do I change cambio the letter Y? Do I cambia la I? Sí, la cambio. Sí, la cambiaría. Hmm. Can someone else confirm that? ¿Alguien más confirma eso? No. no. We don't change it, Oscar. No la cambiamos. Solo agregamos. We only add ING. So we say study. Thank you very much. Now, no. Francisco, I guess you're ready, Francisco. So what about fly? Flee. Flying. Agre flying. Flying. Okay. Now let me see Julio. Let's go with go. Going. Going. Jessica, once again, do. Doing. Doing. What about Doing. Patricia? What about Ty? Fine. Do I change something here? Yes. What do I change? E. Mm -hmm. For ENG. Okay, that's so. Let me write it down. Let me see. You're saying that I do this like that? No, mm, I don't know. Or what you're saying is this like that. I don't remember. Someone remembers the rule? Yes. What? Yes. Yes. We need to change I D change. or Y. Change. Why? So, like you, huh? so you like that? that? Yes. Yes. Yes, teacher. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, like that. So that's we say tie, tie in. What about line? Do I do the same thing? The same. The same thing. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Now, um, I was telling you before, today we're going to move on to our 15th class. In our 15th class, guys, it's going to be about time expressions. When we say time expressions, we make reference to time, of course. What does it mean? Today, we're going to try to understand how to use or how to answer some questions regarding to the time. 
So just let me go ahead and start this presentation so you can have an idea of what I'm talking about. In this case, we have this information here and when asking for time, we have some questions that are going to be very, very important that you know. For example, the common questions forms that we used to ask the time right now are the two forms, the common forms, las formas más comunes. We can say either what time is it or what is the time? So either or, cualquiera de las dos. So both of them are going to be correct. Now, those are the most common ones. In number two, what happens? When you want to be more polite, cuando quieres ser más educado, especially from a stranger, especialmente para un extraño. You don't know the person, for example, you were walking, ibas caminando on the street, we're walking on the street, and all of a sudden, de repente, you want to know the time. And you don't know the person, but you are going to ask him or her, could, could you tell me the time, please? Could you tell me the time, please? So remember, this one is more polite, es más educada, but it is especially used with strangers, especialmente utilizada con extraños. Okay, okay? so that's going to be pretty much the question that we're going to ask. Now, in number three, what happened? When we want to know about a specific time or about, about an event that's having place at a specific time, we are going to ask questions like this. For example, what time and when? Those two, esas dos, are going to help you to understand about a specific time, un tiempo específico. So we have some examples here. What time does the flight to New York leave? A qué hora sale el vuelo a New York? So when we ask the question, what time? It's because we want to know specifically the time when this flight is going to leave to New York. Then the other, when does the bus arrive from London? Cuando llega el bus de Londres? So once again, we want to know about a specific event or the time that this specific event is going to happen. Now, when does the concert begin? ¿A qué hora empieza el concierto? So once again, we're asking the same thing. So remember, the reason why I'm telling you these guys is because we have different scenarios. In English, for example, if you want, if you know the person, si tú conoces a la persona, or you want to use the common language, solo quieres utilizar el, el lenguaje común, you can say what time is it or what is the time, either or, both of them. If you want to be more polite, si quieres ser más educado y sonar más professional, let's say, or when you're going to ask, especially a stranger, you know, could you tell me the time, please? And then we have the last ones, which are the ones that I already said. You, you uh, tell me time. Felix, you have a question? Uh, no, teacher. Uh, please. No. Pardon. Okay. Pardon. Now, uh, let me see. We are, let me see. Julio, can you please read the first two questions, the third one, and then the last ones, all of them, please. What time is it? What is the time? Could you tell me the time, please? Okay. What time? When? What time does the fly to New York live? Mm -hmm. When does the bus, the bus arrive from London? Okay. When does the concert begin? Okay. That was really nice, Julio. Thank you very much for that. 
Now let's see, um, Jessica, I would like you to do the same thing, please. What, what time it is? What is the time? Okay. Could you tell me the time, please? Okay. What time? When? What time does the, la the flight to New York leave? When does the bus arrive from London? Mm -hmm. When does the concert begin? The concert begin. Thank you very much. Now let me listen to you, Juan. What time is it? What is time? What is the time? The time, okay. Could you tell me the time, please? Mm -hmm. What time? When? What is, does the flight to the New York live? Leave. Leave. When does the bus arrive from London? Arrive. Arrive. When does the concert be? begin? Begin. Okay. Now this one, guys, and this uh, word, in esta palabra, we do not pronounce the letter L. No pronunciamos la letra L. So we say could, could, con D, could. So we don't say cool, because cool, it's another thing. So if you pronounce the letter L, si usted pronuncia la letra L, no va a estar diciendo lo que usted piensa que está diciendo. So we say could, could, could. Okay, that's the pronunciation that we're going to have for that. So I'm going to move on, because I think that this is pretty clear. It's really easy and really understandable. So I'm not going to stop or not going to focus that much on this. Now, since we are talking guys about the time, there are two, existen dos formas de decir el tiempo. First, la número uno. Say the hour first and then the minutes. Esta es la más común. Decimos la hora y después los minutos. For example, it's 6.25. Son las 6.25. It's 8.05. Son las 8.05. It's 9.11. Son las 9.11. It's 2.34. Son las 2.34. So this one is really easy. Bien fácil. That's the first form. Es la primera forma. Now, the number two, la número dos es la que más se les complica a las personas. Why? Let me explain you why. Del minuto uno, from minute number one to minute 30, del minuto uno al minuto 30, vamos a usar la palabra past. From minute 31 to minute 59, del minuto 31 al minuto 59, vamos a usar la palabra to. ¿Qué significa esto? Si cuando yo utilice past, yo voy a decir los minutos y luego past y luego la hora. For example, and then cuando yo utilice to, voy a decir eh, las o, los minutos eh, and then la hora example 2.35 ¿Cómo diría 2.35 en la primera forma? Can someone tell me? It is 2.35 Almost close 2.35 It's 2.35 Thank you very much Francisco Now, en la segunda forma, como ya es el 35, yo voy a decir el minuto, primero los minutos y después la próxima hora, la que está después de las dos. ¿Sí? Porque del minuto 31 al 59, yo voy a decir la hora que viene, no la que estoy. Por ejemplo, it is 25 to 3. 25 a las 3. 
This is for minuto 31 al 59. Y vamos a usar to, as you can see here. It is 25, decimos los minutos, then to, y luego la hora próxima, la que va a venir. Now, here we have 11 y 20. Juan Peñate, ¿cómo diría 11 y 20 en la primera forma? Like in the first, the first form. It's 11 and 20. 11 20. Ok, 11 20. Thank you very much. Now, como estoy al minuto 20, quiere decir que sigo la primera regla que dice que voy a usar past. Del minuto 1 al 30. From 1 to 30. Now, en esta voy a decir it's 20 past. Y aquí sí voy a decir la hora en que estamos. 11. Es como de que diría, son 20 minutos pasadas las 11. It's the idea clear. Si está clara la idea. Yes, teacher. All right. Yes, yes. Good. Now, Perdón, let's... teacher, yo sí, yo ten, me, a mí me confundió porque como primero es como una regla que dice que es, es para la próxima hora, ¿verdad? Y ahora me dice, siento yo como lo contrario. Y actually, sí, uh, de hecho, sí es lo contrario. It is. For example, en la primera, cuando vamos a utilizar past, del minuto 1 al 30, from 1 to 30, yo voy a decir la hora en la que estoy. For example, si yo te pregunto ahorita que me digas 9 y 27, utilizando esta, ¿cómo lo dirías tú? Según lo que acabas de entender. How would you say that? 9 y 27. Eh, 27. 27. Esa me la estás diciendo como la primera forma. Pero ah, bueno. vamos a ver cómo la dirías. Porque ahí es donde me confundo yo. Ok. Dicho, aquí es, aquí es Dicho, donde... Yo, creo que, uh -huh. yo creo que en español, para que lo comprenda, para que capte la idea, dice, se dice del, entre el 1 y el 30 minutos, se va a decir pasados va 20, minutos. 27 minutos, pasadas las, las 9. Exactamente. Uh -huh. Y cuando ya pase el 31, serían, ahí hay que hacer como una resta, lo que faltaría para llegar a la siguiente hora. Exacto. En este caso sería 27 past 9. Exacto. Y en this case, en este caso, porque todavía estamos en el 27, sería, Ajá, it's 27 past 9, pasada las 9. Ya. Teacher. Yes. Eh, yo creo que sería como más fácil comprenderlo en el sentido de que cuando vemos la hora y es antes de las y 30, generalmente en español siempre decimos es las 9 y 15, las 9 y entonces usamos el, el tú. Pero uh -huh. cuando es de las 31 en adelante, generalmente si nos preguntan la hora siempre decimos faltan tanto para las 9. Entonces so cuando es, uh -huh. en, eso es como en español, entonces ahí ocupamos... El, perdón, el tú lo ocupamos en esa parte. Yes, I mean, el, y el past uh -huh. en las primeras 30 minutos. Yes, exactly. That's pretty much what, what we do in English too. Eso es también lo que hacemos en inglés. For minute 1 to 30, we're going to use past. And for minute 31 to 59, we're going to use two. So that's pretty much the same. So um, then, Vamos a ver otras formas, que es como decir las y cuarto, mediodía. We're going to see all those. Las vamos a ver todas. But first of all, I need you to understand really clear how to use those. Si necesito que entiendan bien cómo funcionan esta number two. Normally or usually people prefer to use number one. Prefieren utilizar la número uno. Why? Simple. It's simple and it's easy. 
It's really easy to say. Si él me dice diez y media, 10.30, that's it. It's 10.30. So it's easier. But this one is not difficult, but it's kind of confusing if you don't know how to use it. But once you know how to use it, it's easy to. Now, is it clear? Si se entendió la idea? Did you understand now? Or it's still we have a doubt? Sí, teacher. Pero podemos estar usando la primera necesariamente. Oh, I mean, I mean, that's going to be up to you. La form, se les enseña las dos formas porque hay personas que van a preferir utilizar la forma número dos. Y si usted no le, right. pues no va a entender. But, como estaba diciendo antes, normally, todos prefieren utilizar number one. Why? Porque es más fácil. It's easier and you don't complicate yourself. No se complica. But... There's some people who prefer to use number two. And that's why it's necessary that you understand both ways. Okay. All right. So um, we I'm going to read the other examples that we have. For example, 418. It's 18 past four. 18 minutos pasadas las cuatro. So tenemos 851. It's nine to nine. Son las nueve o faltan nueve para las nueve. That's what we're saying. Ocho cincuenta y uno. Now, la dos cincuenta y nueve. It's one to three. Un minuto para las tres. But this is just for form number two. Solamente para forma número dos. If someone else asks you and you feel more comfortable, if you feel more comfortable using number one, use number one. That's okay. But, for example, if you're doing an exam or if someone else asks you or someone else gives you the hour in this way, si alguien más le da el tiempo en, este, en esta forma, so you are going to understand already. Why? Because you will know both. Sabrán ambos. So if there's no any other question, alguna otra pregunta, or are we clear with that part? Ahora, teacher, con la pregunta, eh, el uso de la segunda forma eh, eh, es en eh, sí si se usa bastante o, o no? Mm, not usually that is going to depend on, on the person. Eso va a depender mucho de la persona. Why? Porque si tú, eh, por ejemplo, like even in Spanish, in Spanish, normally, in, in my case, Si alguien me, ha, me, me pregunta la hora, yo les digo, si me pregunta ahorita, ¿qué hora son? What time is it? It's 9.33, 9.33. Why? So I prefer to use the first one. Prefiero utilizar la primera. Why? Because it's easier, es más fácil. But there are some people, hay algunas personas que si usted le pregunta, what time is it? Le van a decir, okay, it's 27 minutes or 27 to 10. That's what they're going to tell you. So it's really, uh, in this case, it's more for you to understand. It's más que todo para que entiendas how to use both of them. Mm -hmm. y lo, lo, lo digo porque en español, a veces yo uso la segunda forma, ¿verdad? Y, y a veces dejo en la luna a la gente. Ahora en inglés, en inglés, eh, no sé si con la juventud hoy en día o la gente lo está usando ¿verdad? oh I mean uh, no honestly honestamente nowadays uh, young people uh, or youth la juventud they prefer to use number one normally it's elder people las personas eh, en este caso como professionals presidents uh, some sometimes deputies, diputados, or people who, who is in a professional level, most of the time, la mayoría de veces van a preferir utilizar esta. But normally, todos se van por la número uno. It's easier. Gracias. Teacher, ¿y la hora militar? Oh, yeah, that's, that's even worse. Eso es todavía horrible. I mean, even for me in Spanish, I really don't understand when someone tells me something like that. For example, uh, 
Uh, I remember that when I was in school, I had a teacher who was a military, a military like when he was young. And usually when you ask him the hour or the time he was like, ocho y quince, like ochocientas, I don't know. Ocho, 20, 20, 15. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's weird. Las ocho era, era como, como rarísimo, se decían ocho cien, a las ochocientas something. So in English, eh, that way, normalmente esa forma existe únicamente en el sentido militar. Then in real life, en el sentido real, nobody is going, to, is going to use that. Nadie lo va a utilizar de esa forma. Okay. Thank you. Only if you're going to the military. Si usted va a ir a la, a la militancia de Estados Unidos, yes, they are going to use it. But other than that, the other form, no, that's not going to be possible. We're only going to have those two. Now, here we have, uh, of course, this is a clock. Para que puedan reconocerlo, como le decimos a clock, le llamamos un reloj, un clock, solamente a los que están en la pared. Clock. Eso le vamos a llamar clock. Si usted quiere decir esto que andamos en la mano, le llamamos either wrist watch, reloj de muñeca, brisk watch, or solo le llamamos watch. ¿Sí? Do not confuse that. No hay que confundirnos en eso. Normally, cuando se empieza a aprender inglés, los alumnos confunden y dicen, oh, that's a clock. O a todos le llaman clock. No. Clock is the only one that you have on the wall. Solo la que está en la pared. And then the other is either watch or wrist watch. Now, have you ever wondered, alguna vez se han preguntado qué significaba AM and PM? Here we have AM in English, dado que viene del inglés, eh, we say after midnight. AM significa después de la medianoche, after midnight. And then PM, past morning. Pasada la mañana. So that's what it means when you listen to AM or PM. So uh, to, to these ones, a estas le llamamos hands of the clock. Que sería como las agujas del reloj. Hands of the clock. Si lo decimos de esa manera es porque son frases ya del idioma. Porque si usted trata de traducir esto es como que diga manos del reloj. También like in Spanish. En español hay veces hay personas que le llaman in that way. But... Son frases ya idiomáticas. Le decimos agujas del reloj or flechas del reloj, which is hands of the clock. So don't forget that, please. No se olvide esto. Clock, the one that you have on the wall, and wristwatch or watch, the one that you use in your hands. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to move on. And here we have, aquí tenemos más, un poquito más de allá. Sí? Lo que estábamos explicando hace ratito. De aquí para acá, to. De aquí para acá, past. Here, cuando está aquí, es o'clock. En punto, o'clock. Cuando está a la mitad, es half past. Para decir y cuarto, decimos a quarter. A quarter. Un cuarto. So that's the way we're going to, we're going to say a quarter. So it's like, like pretty much like in Spanish that when someone asks you, for example, si yo le digo a alguien, if I want to say, si quiero decir, son las siete y quince. Eh, let's see, vamos a preguntarle. I'm going to ask Juan. Juan is here. Yeah, Juan. Yes. Eh, if I ask you to tell me siete y cuarto, how would you say that? It's seven a quarter past. It's seven a quarter past. Hmm. No. It's a quarter, quarter past seven. seven. It's a quarter past seven. Correct. Like that. Thank you. Yeah. Very much. So it's it's like try, trying to understand. We can also say, también podemos decir de la forma más fácil, like siete quince o siete cuarto. 
It's seven and a quarter. Siete y cuarto. It's seven and a quarter. That's another way to say it. Es otra forma de decirlo que nos referiríamos a la número uno that we saw already, de la que ya vimos. Now, uh, this is pretty much the use that, give, that we give to the, to the clock. El uso que le damos to the time when we're talking about time expressions, expresiones de tiempo. So normally it's very important that you know how to use the clock. Why? Because, I mean, you can go through walking through the street. Puede pasar caminando, like in the center of El Salvador. Imagine, like nowadays we have a lot of uh, international people that come to El Salvador, foreigners. Tenemos bastantes personas extranjeras that are coming to El Salvador. What happens? ¿Qué pasa si de repente le preguntan qué hora son y apenas hablan español? So now it's important that you know how to use that. I mean, if you travel, si alguna vez you have the opportunity to travel outside the country, I mean, it will be important also for you to know how to use the clock. So according to the information that we have here, do you guys have any question or it's clear at the moment? Is it clear? Well, I'm going to take that as a yes. So I'm going to move on. And here we have just some examples here, like what time is it? It's five past two. See, ¿Sí? son cinco pasadas las dos. It's five past two. And this one, estamos usando forma número uno or number two? Number two. Number two. Now, in this one, what time? What's the time? It's four o'clock. So in this one, we're using pretty much like number one. Why cuatro punto? What's the time? It's 20 past five. Son 20 pasada las cinco. So those are only examples that we have for you to have an idea if in case someone asks you. ¿Cómo podemos decir, por ejemplo, acá son las nueve y media? What's the time? It's half past nine. That's the way we say it. Esa es la forma en que lo decimos. Siempre. Half past. Half past, for example, if someone asks you, si alguien le pregunta, Felix. For example, dos y media. How would you say? It's half, it's half past two. It's half past two. Correct. That's pretty much it. Now we have the last example here. What's the time? It's 22.11. Faltan 20 a las 11. So those are, as I said, only examples for you to remember what we just saw some minutes ago. And now if there's no any other question, we're going to go directly to the practice. Okay. Questions, preguntas before we go to the practice? No? Oh, no, 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 no. So we're gonna, oh, by the way, um, I was checking, estaba revisando eh, las personas que enviaron su fotografía. Eh, not all people send it. No todos le enviaron. So I just received some and estaba verificando que algunos me les faltó algo muy importante, which is the verb to be. Lo cual es el verbo to be. La mayoría solo me puso going to, blah, blah, blah. Going to and then the verb. Going to and then the verb. No. Si no le pone el verbo to be, does not make sense. No tiene sentido. So the verb be, as I told you yesterday, como les dije ayer, it's an auxiliary. Es un auxiliar which is very, very important. So if you don't put it there, si no lo ponía ahí, does not make sense at all. No tiene sentido. So I was checking some of you there, but at least, al menos se ve que trataron de hacerlo. So thank you very much for your effort, por el esfuerzo, los que lo enviaron y los que no. It's okay to, at the end of the day, al final, it's just for you to practice. 
para que practiquen. So, Profe, teacher. Yes. Sí, una, una consulta. Este, ¿Cómo diría las 12 del mediodía y las 12 del medianoche? Ok. Siempre sería That, o'clock. That's a good question. So let me go ahead and go back here. Ok. So we want to say, si queremos decir, for example, eh, mediodía, I'm going to, lo voy a escribir en el chat. I'm going to say it here. We can say, es mediodía, es noon. Es mediodía, it is noon. Or it's noon. Contract. Mediodía. Now, si quiero decir medianoche, I can say, es, Midnight, medianoche, it's midnight. That's the way we say it. Esas son las dos formas que decimos. Mediodía, medianoche. It's noon or it's midnight. Those are the two ways. Esas son las dos formas que vamos a utilizar. Good question. Thank you for asking that question. Now, uh, if there's no any other questions, si no hay alguna pregunta, uh, For, for the time expressions, para el tiempo, nos vamos a ir a la práctica. We're going to go directly to the practice. So you know what to do already. So take screenshot, pictures, or whatever you do to have those, those pictures so you can work in the breakout room. So you let me know when you're done with this one so I can move on to the next. Yes. All right. Here we have. And we're going to have this conversation that is going to be about the time. So if we're okay with that, we're going to also have this other conversation. And that's going to be pretty much all that we have. Now, so just let me create the breakout room so you can go ahead and work with the others. Just let me move some people here. Okay. So we have this one here. Okay. So please go ahead and join your rooms. I will be checking you all.
Ah, hey, sí. Ah. Ahí es y, y cuarto. Correcto. Cuarto. 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 Es ¿Quién, ¿Quién tiene la tercera? Esa no la copié no la, no la copi yo. Yo tampoco, es la... la cuarta tengo. Pero no tengo. Ajá, la cuarta, la cuarta ¿Cuál? es... Eh... ¿Alguien la va a compartir la por ahí? ¿Cuál era la, la tercera? La tercera es una, es, una, es una conversación de Jen y David. Ajá, y la cuarta es una de Tommy ¿Esta? y Samantha. Exacto. 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 Sí, esa es. Ok. Bueno, esa es la pronunciación. Esa es la pronunciación. Yeah. Yeah. Comience alguien con Jay. Jay. Yeah. What time is it? We are going to be late for the party. It's a quarter. It's a quarter past six. We are all time. No worry, we will be fine. Y dice en paz y leve. Paz 12. 12. Y la otra sería. It's 10 to 3. 10 to 3. O 4. Sí. Sí. ¿Por? Ah, no, tri, ¿verdad? Sí, tri, compañero. Sí, porque más para cerca, el tri. Uh -huh. Está más cerca. Pero mi pregunta es, compañeros, ¿habían dos imágenes de relojito? Sí. No, yo solo sí. tomé una. La otra creo que era la que yo estaba compartiendo. Uh -huh. Esa es. Esta. Ajá. Sí. Ajá, esa no la tengo yo. Quiero ver. Ah, esa, esa, esa es como la al paz y eh, eh, sería ten half paz, ¿verdad? Sí. ¿Cuál? So we're just going to wait for your for the others to come back to the main session so we can I can give you the last information that we have for today. Okay, so now the majority is going to come back to the main session. And well, guys, um, 
I hope that you at least complete the first or second part of the exercises. Well, and remember that tomorrow is our last class. Mañana es nuestra última clase. So for tomorrow, guys, we are going to have a little bit of grammar. Vamos a tener un poquito de grammar, vocabulary, vocabulario, and practice. That's what we're going to do. Um, and then, well, it's going to be pretty much all. As a reminder, como recordatorio, remember that you have to complete the platform either tomorrow, para mañana, or Friday, the latest. Lo más tarde el viernes a 12, 12 de la noche. ¿Qué decimos? ¿Cómo decimos medianoche? Noon. Midnight. Midnight. At midnight. midnight. So you have until midnight for you to complete the platform, the ones that already completed it, los que ya lo completaron. It's okay. Thank you very much and congratulations to the ones that are moving to the next module para los que ya están listos para el próximo módulo. So that's going to be all for today, guys. Thank you very much for attending to today's class. See you tomorrow. Do not forget that it's our last class. No olviden que es nuestra última clase. So have a good night, guys. Take care. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher.